everybody. Uh, my name is Marla. I'm the Adult Services Manager at the North Riverside Public Library. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight for NRPL premieres. I'm just going to go ahead and adjust the camera a little bit. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for joining us uh, for our NRPL premieres today. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to create a charcuterie board. I think I'm saying it right. I make them and I don't even know how to pronounce them. Um, basically, we're making a, um, a spread of lunch meats, cheeses, crackers, fruit, cookies, whatever you really want to throw on here. Um, usually you put it on a, a cutting board. Sometimes they're just a serving board with a handle. Um, and everybody can kind of like pick at it all night if you're having a party. So this comes just in time for New Year's Eve um, if, or if you're having any belated holiday parties in January um, or really whatever. So mine is going to have a little bit of like gingerbread and cranberries because I'm recording this in advance um, before all the Christmas get togethers. Um, but if you're doing it for the spring, you could add fresh flowers, summer, same, um, really whatever you want. I'm using kind of a mixture of what's already in my fridge that I kind of want to get rid of. Um, and also bought a couple things just to make it special for the holidays. Um, so I'm first going to start by showing you how to make a flower or a rose out of salami, a salami flower. Um, so that's that. So you're going to start with a glass. A wine glass works best. Mine is a little greasy already because I already made a salami flour. And you're going to take your salami. This is hard salami um, bought at Aldi, but um, they also have thick slice salami. So you don't want it thick. You just want like a regular slice of salami. So you're going to take all of your salami. I used one side, this had two sides, one and two. I used a whole side for my flour and I made a pretty large flour. So you're going to start with your wine glass um, and you're just gonna tuck the salami in. You're gonna tuck more inside than what's on the outside. You're gonna turn it a little and you're gonna add another piece overlapping a little bit, not overlapping all the way, but overlapping a little bit. And another, see how they're overlapping like flower petals. I'm gonna add one more here. So I'm gonna have four leaves on my outside, four petals. Okay, so we have a nice overlap. You can see it's starting to make, well, maybe you can't, but it's starting to make the middle inside. We're gonna keep overlapping it. Now we're going to tuck in a little less and have a little more hanging out on the edge. And we're just gonna go around overlapping as we did before. I'm gonna have three on this one. No, I'm gonna have four again, because I have a space here. And each layer, you're going to have a little more hanging out on the edge than is inside. So you wanna start by having a lot inside and a little outside, and then moving so that more of the salami is hanging outside and less inside. And you're just kind of gonna see where like the gaps are. 
and then you're going to layer there. And I'm out of salami. So then you're going to go ahead and flip it over. And that's it. That's how you make a salami rose. So I'm going to add this to my charcuterie board. Along with my other one. My other one's kind of limping by now, but. Those will be two of the focal points of our charcuterie board. This guy has a piece hanging out. Okay. Obviously you wash and dry your cutting board. You should let it air dry completely before you start doing this. I'm also going to have another focal point which is a port wine cheese ball that I got at Aldi. Um, I just, I love port wine cheese balls. This one has almonds in it. You can choose to have nuts on your board. Many people do. Um, sometimes, obviously there are nut allergies. Um, so if you don't wanna add nuts, obviously you don't have to. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start, now that I know where my focal points are, I'm going to add a border. And for your border, you can choose grapes or strawberries. I like to have fruit border, the, the charcuterie board. So I'm gonna go ahead, I might make these look a little nicer. I'm going to go ahead and throw some grapes on the border. And then I kind of know where the guidelines are to stay inside. Please ignore any sounds of lawnscaping, landscaping lawn maintenance. We have a million trees, which equals a million leaves. And apparently, they decided to leaf blow while I was recording. So that's nice. So I'm going to layer, not layer, but I'm gonna border with grapes wherever I can. The rest of these are just loose grapes. But that's okay. You are getting the idea. The little movies. Okay. I also have cranberries because I'm making a holiday charcuterie board. So I'm going to go ahead. I have these grooves in my cutting board. So I'm going to line the grooves with cranberries. And again, this is kind of just giving me that border so I know where my edges are. And because they're cranberries, it's gonna give me a little festive look. Um, you can do this with raspberries, blueberries, blackberries. You could just do it with more grapes if you wanted to. Apple slices, apple slices tend to brown, but if you soak them in lemon juice, they won't. I got a couple runaways, good thing my dog isn't awake or he would be trying to eat the cranberries. I don't think they can have cranberries. So, okay, I got a little border going on here. I'm gonna fill in the corners a little bit. All right. Looks good. Now I can begin filling in the middle of my board. 
I have my focal points, I have my borders. I'm gonna move the cranberries aside. And I'm going to start with meats. So my charcuterie board today is going to have the salami flowers, as well as prosciutto, pepperoni, and little beef jerky sticks. You can also use co cocktail weenies. Um, you can really use anything you want here. I see lots of kid-friendly versions that use hot dogs. My kids love, this is like a glorified Lunchable for them. So they're not too picky when it comes to this. They probably won't eat the port wine, but that's okay. So I'm going to roll my prosciutto up. This is prosciutto that I got from Aldi, of course. I love Aldi and it's perfect for things like this. And I'm just going to peel it. Prosciutto is like paper thin, so it's really sensitive. But I'm just going to roll it up. And then I'm going to put them in a fan shape on my charcuterie board. So you have to pick where you want your meats, your cheeses, and then like your fruits and dips and stuff. So I'm going to start my meat over here. Again, I'm just going to roll it up. And just layer it onto my board. This leaf blower is so loud, so I'm going to try to edit out background noise. <laughs> I don't know how well it will work. All right, I'll do one more for now. And I can touch the rest of it up later. Okay, my prosciutto. The salami and the prosciutto is the hardest. After that, I have pepperoni. In a glare here. I have pepperoni and this is really simple. It's just gonna go on exactly how it is. I'm gonna layer that in front of my prosciutto. as much or as little as you want. There's really no rules, there's no guidelines. Maybe some guidelines, but no rules. And then my last meat are the little beef jerky sticks. I don't know if I got these at Aldi, but again, they're, um, they're just like little Slim Jims. So they're really small. And I'm gonna put those, really sorry about these curtains and the glare you're getting here really small. And I'm just gonna put those all in front of the pepperoni. There's not too many in this bag. So I'm just gonna use them all. Not the silica packet. Oh, 
Runaway cranberries. Okay. My meats are done for now. Um, and I have kind of a gap here, but we'll come back to that. So now I'm gonna start with the cheese and I'm going to move our salami rows here and move over our grapes. So you can see what I do over here. Um, so you can use cheese squares. I have these already cut cracker cuts from Cracker Barrel, um, but you could cut a block of cheese and do it yourself. So these are just little like lunchable squares, really. I'm gonna put those kind of in that same fan style that I did the prosciutto. And we'll lay it out. And I also have cheese cubes. These are just Aldi brand. You could also make these yourself if you just bought like blocks of cheese and wanted to cut them. So I'm just gonna pour some out. And just kind of layer them up with little Monopoly houses. Okay. That's my um, hard cheese. Now we're gonna go to soft cheese. I have a blue cheese wedge. I love blue cheese, not everybody does, but if, oops, I just spilled it all over. Um, but if you do, like me, then you can choose where to put this. I'm gonna put it back here. You definitely want some napkins or paper towels while you're doing this, because it does get messy. You'll either get your hands really greasy, so you can use gloves if you want. Um, this is just for my family, and obviously you wash your hands beforehand. So um, that's some of the soft cheese is the blue cheese. I also have this Borsen, Borsen. Um, it's a garlic and herb soft cheese. And this, you just kind of bring the top foil off. There you go. It just sits there. Um, so that's just about all of my cheese. I might even move the soft cheese over here because it looks like I have a motif going. Cheese in this corner, meat in this corner. Um, and in that case, I'm still gonna keep my salami flour over here. It might push off the grapes though. It's kind of all about doing whatever you want to it. You can move it as it goes. There is no rule that you have to have this over here and this over here. I'm gonna put some grapes over here to fill this in. Okay. It's all about what looks aesthetically pleasing. So there will be a lot of maneuvering while you're doing it. Um, crackers are next. So I'm gonna keep the crackers back here so then I can build forward and you guys can see. I have bagel chips. I have pita chips. I have Ritz crackers and I have pretzel sticks. So I may or may not use all of them because I still have other garnishments that I want. So I'm gonna layer out these bagel chips. Not using any broken ones. Okay. 
these pita chips and the bagel chips. I all got at Aldi. Just about everything here came from Aldi. Oh, these are puffy pita chips. So these take up a lot of space. I'm not going to use too many of these. I'm going to have a layer of grits because everybody likes some plain crackers once in a while. And then pretzel sticks. I want at least one layer of pretzel sticks in the front. Pretzel sticks um, are not only like, a, they're not bland, but you know, a very plain favorite. So if somebody doesn't like all the garlic and herb and like cheeses and stuff, they'll at least snack on some pretzels maybe. And also because they are darker than the rest of the crackers, they give you that, um, that definition, that contrast between the lighter crackers. Okay, and since we're almost done, <laughs> um, I have pickles and artichoke hearts. I have a little bit of plum jam, you can use big jam. I have olives, I have jardinera, I have peperoncini, but I'm running out of room. Um, so I might end up changing a little bit of my border here and adding some stuff, but we'll see how that goes. So these are all, you know, usually submerged in some type of vinegar or liquid. And the olives, you know, you drain ahead of time, but you're not going to drain everything else. So I use wee yogurt jars um, and a lot of mine are decorative. So I'm going to take my little tongs. And I'm gonna start, I have some sweet gherkins. I'm gonna put the gherkins in a wee jar. Like so. And little things like this, you'll probably end up refilling during the night if you want to. Um, and then I'm gonna put that on here. Occasionally I have some runaway cranberries, so don't mind that. Um, I also want pepperoncinis. So I'm gonna put those in a little jar. And this is something that you might want to have um, a little jar of toothpicks on the side or little baby forks or however you want to with like mini plates. All right, pepperoncinis. Here. And then I think I have room for two more. So I'm going to do artichoke hearts. I love artichoke hearts. I don't know about you. Um, they have seasoned ones in a jar. These are just the plain ones. I like to offer really flavor flavorful stuff, but also have some plain options for people who might be sensitive to seasonings um, or so forth. So I'm gonna fit this guy in here with more runaway cranberries. 
And then of course, it wouldn't be Chicago without using some Jardinera. This is mild Jardinera. Obviously you can use mild or hot. I think this one I'm just gonna pour into the jar. That's better. And this one I'm going to place right in front here. Okay, so I have olives left over. Um, I don't really have anywhere to put them, but you could fit them in just kind of wherever they make sense. You could fill up your salami flowers with olives. I'm gonna move some of my cranberry border and I'm gonna sneak some olives in here. And then for symmetry purposes, I'm gonna to try to get some wherever else I can, because I don't think it's a charcuterie board without olives, but you might hate olives. So you might not wanna offer any and that's okay. But I do have a nice gap here between the cheese and the pickles. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay. And I'm finished. So I'm going to show you my final product. I'm going to wipe everything up real quick and make it look real presentable. So you do have to excuse me because this is a vintage table we got and we are currently in the process of refinishing it or will be at least pretty soon. 